Hey guys, my name is Stephanie, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about what Father Reuben and Father Josh spoke about in the video this week. And so I want to talk about three things in particular. One, a little bit about the children of Fatima that they spoke about, which are the holy children that um, we're going to be praying through their session kind of a little bit this, this month. And the second thing is the Bible, um, a bit more about the Bible, because they spoke a lot about the Bible, but just kind of give you like a way to kind of get to the Bible and kind of read it on your own, which I think is really great for you to do at this age in your life. And the third thing, a little bit about mass and the sign of the cross and sacraments is like the, a little bit about that stuff that they spoke about as well. So the first thing is these children um, that were in Fatima, Lucia, Francesco, um, and Jacinta were these three children, not very different in age you in fact, younger than you. Um, they were um, shepherd children. And um, here's a picture of them because I think it's good to kind of see a picture of um, what they look like. So in my mind, this picture, they are very, very um, serious. Do you agree? Um, but but they were, at the same time as being really serious, they look very like holy and beautiful and, you know, just really intent on what God has called them to so remember mary appeared to these children and they they saw her they did the rosary right um which is a, a prayer a traditional prayer of the catholic faith they were even imprisoned remember them remember father uh Ruben speaking about that they were even in prison they went to prison and were so the, the adults in the prison were so touched by their actions that they too began to pray the rosary so these three children which are really and if you look here at the statue of them let me move my, my in there if you look at this statue of them which is a great statue by the way you see that they were just shepherd children right so that means that they like their job was to take care of sheep um and and mary appeared to them just like they were like just in the daily life that they live so i think about what you guys do every day so maybe you're a soccer player or maybe you like to read or maybe um you uh, like play a musical instrument or something like whatever you like to do and you're just doing that and then mary came to them in their real life so i think it's really cool that um that we have that that picture of them like the idea that 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 they can be just their their self their very self so and i know like right now in your life it's kind of like oh i don't even know if myself is very like why would god pick me no way that god would pick me i'm just like so simple and so whatever maybe you even have negative words about yourself i promise you that god chooses you too and you too are holy like everything about you. And sometimes it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe for me too, and I'm an adult. So, but God chooses you exactly as you are, even if you're not the star player on your team or, or the best reader in your class, right? Or the best, whatever, mathematician, the best instrument, whatever it is, God still chooses you. There was nothing spectacular about these children, these three children. They were simply themselves. So when you pray at night, and I hope you're still, you're praying at night, and, and when you're praying for your intentions at night, um, I don't know, it could be any kind of intention, like just it could be for your grandparents. It could be for a test that's coming up. It could be for a friend of yours, maybe who's struggling, right? But when you're praying for your intentions at night, when you go to sleep, I want you to ask for these children um, to intercede for you. Now, that's a big word we use sometimes. But all it means, um, I like this explanation of it. Like if you're watching a football game and there's interception, which is the same, it comes from the same word, right? And there's interception. The ball's going across from one player, maybe from the quarterback to a running, and the ball's going across. And there's somebody who intercedes, who gets, who intercepts the ball, right? Who gets the ball. That's kind of what we're asking these children gonna, to do for you for the next month. They're going to take your prayer, your intention, and intercept it, take it, and then bring it to God, right? So, um, and I love it whenever I'm really stressed out or if I'm really feeling like something really heavy on my heart and I don't maybe have the courage to say it all. So let's say if it's like something like, you know, like I'm just not getting along with my friends. I'm not seeing my friends. I don't have enough friends or whatever I'm feeling that's really heavy on my heart. Then I would ask these children to intercept that prayer, to intercede for me between God, between me and Jesus Christ, right? So take the prayer that's in my heart, even the stuff that I don't, I'm not even brave enough to say about it, and take that prayer and bring it to Jesus Christ. So when you go to sleep for the next 
several weeks and you're listing all the ways you, you would, you know, all the intentions that you have for God, for the, not only for yourself, but for your family, you know, those who might be sick in your family or those who might be struggling with something in your family, but also the world, like people, the things that you see in your world that, that God really needs to, I, I want you to ask for these children to intercede, right, for you. That's the first thing. What are their names? Jacinta. Lucia and Francesca, right? And where were they? They were in Fatima. And who appeared to them? Mary. Mary appeared to them, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is the Bible. So I want you to take a moment right now, and you can pause me, right? Just go ahead and pause me and go look for your Bible. This is a Bible I found in my house. So go look at your, for yours. Okay, so you're back. So the Bible, I know we talk about the Bible a lot. It's a, it's a pretty big book, right? I mean, the Bible is a pretty big book. Sometimes you hear people refer to, and maybe you understand this well, but just listen it through with me, okay? And understand it even better as I explain it. The Bible is separated into two big sections, right? And those two sections are sometimes referred to as the New Testament and the Old Testament, right? Let's put old on this side. The Old Testament comes before the New Testament, right? So the Old Testament is all the things that happen before Jesus for thousands of years, to be honest with you. And most of those things, most of the stories within the Old Testament are about a people called the Jewish people, or sometimes it'll, you know, we'll refer to them as the Israelites, right? It's the same thing. It's the people of the, uh, a people of Israel, which is a physical place, but it's also um, a type of people like the people of Israel, who, who practice the faith called Judaism, which is the name of the faith, and the name of those people are Jews, right? And guess who was a Jew? Jesus, right? So, so that Old Testament is all about um, many, many years of those people's lives. Let me say some of the names because I think you know them. It could be people like um, Saul, Samuel, David, Ruth, Naomi. Um, all of those people are Old Testament stories. And they all happen when? Before Jesus, right? Before Jesus. And then the New Testament happened um, after that, right? It's more new to us, right? And that's the story of Jesus Christ. So then the story of Jesus Christ, and then also stories after Jesus died and rose from the dead and went to heaven to be with the Father, the stories of the church and how it began. Now, I want to talk in particular, in the New Testament, there's a subsection too I want to talk about. But first, let's make sure we understand how to separate the Bible into two parts, okay? So in your Bible, I want you to try to look for where the Old Testament ends and the New Testament begins. I'll give you a hint. The New Testament begins with the Gospel of Matthew, right? So it begins with the book of Matthew. So if you're looking at it, it's kind of interesting, I think, because this is my split. So this is my New Testament. So this is, this is the split of the Bible. This Old Testament is so much bigger. Do you see how big it is compared to the New Testament? So the Old Testament, remember, that's all the stories before Jesus was born. And these are the stories of Samson, of Saul, of David, of um, um, Naomi, of um, the beginning of creation. Like All those stories are here in the Old Testament. This smaller part is the New Testament of the stories of Jesus and the stories in which Jesus lived, right? Or even after when the church was built. Now, you've got that. You can rewind it and you can take your time, okay, to give you that. Make sure you have your Bible is split like this. I want you to particularly look for four books in the New Testament. These four books' names are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they appear in that order. So Matthew, Mark, um, Luke, and John. So I'm gonna show you in the New Testament, those that little section is so small. So if this is the Old Testament, this whole thing is the New Testament, only this little section is what's called the Gospels. And you've probably heard that term before, but the Gospels. So the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? So we have four stories that are gospels that tell the story of who Jesus was. And there are many things in those four stories that are the same, right? That are kind of the same story. So like you might in all four gospels, you'll hear about, hear about the story of Jesus dying, right? And, um, and how 
how that happened, how, how, how he was crucified, how he was accused, right? And, and how he died on the cross. So those things appear um, in the gospel. So what's the name of the four books in the Bible? What are they? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And what are they stories of? They're stories of Jesus Christ, sorry. They're, they are the tellings of Jesus Christ. It's four different um, tellings of who Jesus Christ was. So let me teach you one more thing because I think that sometimes we think that you understand this, but maybe you don't. I'm gonna share my screen. And you kind of saw it earlier when I showed you, right? Um, when I was showing you the Fatima children. But here, sometimes I'll, someone will say, uh, especially in mass, you'll hear someone say, um, um, a reading from the, the Gospel of Matthew, for example, right? So this red section here is a book of the Bible. So this could say Matthew, but it could also say any book in the entire Old and New Testament. So it could be um, Genesis, it could be Proverbs, it could be um, Book of Ruth, it could be Ruth, it could be um, Acts of the Apostles. So any book of the Bible could be listed here in the red. So that's the first thing. So once you see the name, when you're looking for the scripture, you find the name, you find that book in the Bible. And then once you have that book, it then tells you in the green here, the chapter. So in the book of Matthew, find chapter 18. Okay. Now, once you have found the chapter, which is normally a bigger number, you'll have underneath that chapter several verses. This one is at this, this right here is asking you to look for in the chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. So I want you to take a second, pause me, and find this book, chapter, and verse in your Bible. Okay, are you back? I want you to try it again because it's, it's kind of good to practice it a couple times so you kind of know what you're doing. Here's another one. I want you to find Psalm 24, one through 10. Now remember, Psalm is the book. It's, it might have an S on the end of it, Psalms, right? Because Psalm is just like a poem. So that it's a really big, it's probably the biggest book in the Bible, the book of Psalms, which is a lot of poetry. And, and they usually would sing these things. Um, and it's, it's a collection of them, right? So the book of Psalms, which I'm going to give you a hint, is in the Old Testament. So it's in the first part. Book of Psalms, chapter 24, verses 1 through 10. I want you to kind of look for that because it's something that um that fathers Ruben and Father Josh referenced to. So pause me and look for that. Okay, you're back. So I wanted to give you a little bit um to teach you a little bit about how to do how to open your own Bible. And I pray and I really think this is a great idea if you can and if someone can. Um, purchase you a Bible for you to have, and maybe you got one for your first reconciliation or your first communion, um, start opening it up. Start looking at it so you kind of understand how it works. We do that with everything, right? So if we get a new soccer ball and we're like, oh, we don't keep it in the box, right? We take it out and we figure out how it works. If we get a new game on our computer, right? We don't just leave it in the box. We put it in and we play the game and we keep playing it until we figure out how to do it. So I want you to do the same thing with your Bible. I want you to take it out. I want you to figure out how it works and keep playing it until, um, until you understand it. So the, that's, a, that's the second thing I want to tell you about. So the third thing, so the first thing was the children. The second thing is about the Bible. And the third is about mass. So I'm going to use this. As, this is a, a crucifix that we hang in my family's house here. When you walk into mass, you'll, you'll do something probably that you don't think about very much. You'll dip your hands um, in water and you'll bless yourself in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a very powerful prayer that we begin, really mass begins when you walk in. It does. When you make that sign of the cross, it begins. And that sign of the cross is a precious, beautiful prayer. Sometimes it starts prayers. I know the confusion because sometimes you're like, you'll start a prayer with that. It's like, that's not the prayer. We just start the prayer with that. Not true. Like that is a prayer too. So sometimes for me, when I get overwhelmed, like let's say I have a big test or I have to try out for a team or something, you know, I don't know, I got in trouble because something and I'm just in my room or something and I feel overwhelmed about it. I will say that prayer very simply in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, right? And when we walk into church, that's the first thing, the first part of the prayer is when we dip our hands in. Now, your little 
it might look different, but it's called what we call a baptismal font, like a little thing that a little little bin of water, right? That has special water in it. And this water is holy water, which is water that is blessed by a priest, right? We dip our fingers in it and we bless ourselves in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Why do we do that? We do that because it reminds us of our first ever sacrament. What's the first sacrament that we receive? Right, the first sacrament we ever receive is baptism. And, and think about your baptism, and maybe you don't remember it. So I'm gonna get a picture to show you because I think it'll help you um, see or remind yourselves. And, and maybe you can find a picture in your house even um, that will, sh you know, that'll teach you a little bit about that. Um, but I can't find a picture, but the picture is like, imagine, um, and, and if you have a picture, go get it and like pause me. But there's usually a baby. Most of us were baptized as a baby. Some of us weren't though. Some of us were baptized as teenagers or are um, are baptized as teenagers. Some people are are baptized as um, adults even. Some people are baptized when they're in like, you know, first grade, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter. But baptism is baptism. But what happens is when you come to baptism, you'll see a picture of a child right? Or we see an image of baptism. There's a picture of a child or an adult and the priest is standing by them and the priest has a, a bigger bin of water and he baptizes in the name of the father, dipping, dipping his hand in the water, right? The name of the father and the son and the Holy Spirit, right? So when we walk into church, let's just the name of the father, son, and the Holy Spirit. We are reminding ourselves of that first sacrament. What's the first sacrament? Baptism, right. So when mass, when we, everything we do at mass matters. Everything we do at mass has a reason and a meaning. I know that seems like nuts, like how can that be true? But it's absolutely the truth, right? So when we walk in, we baptize, we, we are reminding ourselves of our baptism, right? With that crucifix, with that sign. So when we think about baptism, there's many signs, um, that are sometimes called sacramentals of baptism, right? So a sacramental is just some physical object like holy water that reminds us of something. And so the water reminds us that we are, when the priest puts it over our head, it reminds us that we are cleansed in baptism. We are cleansed of our original sin. Well, what does that mean? Well, that, that sounds very fancy. What does it mean, right? Simple. I mean, it's really honestly very simple. If you go outside and you're playing soccer for a, a five hours in the heat, right? And you come back in, your mom's going to say something like, hey, go take a shower, right? Because you're sweaty and gross, right? You're full of dirt, right? Well, when we're born, we have original sin. So it's all over us. So the, the water reminds us to be, it, it tells us that we are in our baptism wiped of original sin. We're wiped of it. Now, often you'll see that people, when they receive their um, baptism, they're dressed in white. Or they'll put a white garment on them, um, maybe on an adult, like on their shoulder, on a child, like on their chest, right? That white garment reminds us that when we are washed from our sins, our original sin, we are pure like the white garment. Pure to be holy. Pure to love God. Right? It's beautiful. That's the second sacrament I want to tell you. The third is that I want you to notice that when you walk in church, there is a candle. See this candle I have? A big candle um, that's on the altar. And that candle, when you were baptized, well, it's not exactly that one because we get a new one every Sunday, right? I mean, every Easter, I'm sorry. Every Easter we get a new one. But that candle, um, you received your godparents. Who are your godparents? You remember your godparents? Your godparents were, were, were given a candle that was lit from that big Paschal candle, which is called a Paschal candle at Sunday of Easter. And that candle was given to them, not because it was kind of cool to get a candle. No, no, it has a reason, right? And the reason is that it's, it's telling us or reminding us that in our baptism, we receive the light of Jesus Christ inside of us right so the candle was lit by the priest handed to your godparent your godparent holds it and and because they hold the responsibility to make sure that you know that the light of jesus christ shines in you and i don't mean that like you know like oh not a big deal right i mean like there are times when you maybe feel kind of sad and there's maybe times when you feel like life's too hard and like you can't do it right certain things i'm telling you that that light is true and I'm inviting you to remind yourself when you walk into church and you see that light, 
that you that that light shines in you that that light the light of Jesus Christ is in you don't be fearful don't be afraid right because that power that light is in you so when you go to mass this week i want you to do a couple things i want you one to like when you're walking in and you're you're signing yourself the father son the holy spirit remember that you are reminding yourselves of your own baptism right and then when you sit down look for the candle it's like oh that candle that candle is reminds me that the light of jesus christ lives in me and then when they begin to read the readings you know when the lecture goes up and she or he will open the book the bible and he will begin to read to you pay attention is he reading a book from the old testament or the new testament is she reading a book of the no new testament or the old testament pay attention to that and then know that whenever the deacon our fathers josh your father reuben get and they begin to read the third reading usually if you're going to sunday mass third reading that is probably the story from those four books the four books of the gospel what are they called matthew mark luke and john right that they're going to read you the story of jesus christ and those stories are so important and so powerful that fathers Reuben or father joshua deacon gets up to read them to proclaim them so we hear those words right that's a pretty big deal so i want you to pay attention to that too and then a fourth thing notice what color what color vestments it's called vestments what the priests put on and they put on vestments right so sometimes um they'll have white on their collar right well they always have white underneath but they have a white collar on or green or sometimes it can be red sometimes it can be purple what color are they wearing because it matters and we're going to talk more about that next time we're together so that's it i know that's a lot but i want you to you can even replay this if you want and learn more about this okay and i think do do the work like I'm, and i sort of go back to this to remind you if you got a new game in your and you wouldn't like leave it in the box and never put it in your gaming system right you would take it and you would move it and you would keep it put it in your gaming system and, and work on it until you understand understood it fully right so i want you to do that work i want you to take your bible out and look at it. and when you go to mass do the work i want you to look and be like what's going on here and make sense of it because who you are matters. St. Catherine of Siena, one of my favorite saints, she's a Dominican saint. She says, if you are who you should be, you will set the world ablaze. So the more you try to figure out why all this stuff matters and how much Jesus Christ loves you, the more you will be you and the more the world will receive who you are. And God, that's big, man. That's, I think everyone, wants what you are like everyone your parents your grandparents your brothers and sisters your friends like the more the more happy and alive and the more you understand how how big and powerful you are in god the more they see that too and they and they need it and you need it so i'm going to be praying for you and i invite you to pray for my family too um i, I look forward to seeing you next time bye bye